Hudson's Bay. The saga of the great Hudson's Bay Fur Company. And of the brave men who traveled the untrekked wilderness from Labrador to California, from Minnesota to Alaska. Starring Barry Nelson as Jonathan Banner, Hudson's Bay Man. With George Tobias as Pierre Falcone. Working for the Hudson's Bay Company is a kind of ambassador in buckskins. I got used to almost any kind of assignment. Bringing a sick man in for treatment at a settlement, that was, of course, routine. Transporting a whole bevy of mail order brides to prospective bridegrooms in the wilderness, that was a cheerful mission that once broke the routine. During the early days of my service with the Hudson's Bay Company, a most peculiar, and I will say, a not very pleasant duty fell to my lot. Pierre Falcone and I were to be accompanied on our return from a long overland trip by a corpse. our silent passenger and secure him in the box we had brought for that purpose. That ought to hold him to England for doomsday. Banner, I bet you my life this is crazy. The craziest thing we ever do. The worst is over. Let's, let's get them on the wagon and be on our way. The worst, the worst is over. It is not begin. <laughs> oh, you think, you think we are rid of him? Oh, no. <laughs> we have to spend five days and five nights before we get him on the boat and get rid of him. Goodbye. Oh, well, this is a surprise. Pierre Falcone the Fearless, afraid of no living man. Oh, oh. afraid of no woman. Now it seems is afraid of a corpse. A rather long dead corpse at that. Me afraid of this? Why? Oh! There was a tree. <laughs> Could it be on it, maybe? Afraid of this? Me? <laughs> I just don't like it, that's all. A man lie here two, three years absolutely dead, and we dig him up. How I explain this to my old mother? I only know what I told you. A man named Moore, accused of three murders in England, escaped to Canada, killed two more men, and somehow he wound up way out here. Kendricks befriended him and almost lost his life by way of thanks. He's such a good man, Kendricks. I bet you my life he didn't want to shoot him. He didn't want to shoot these fellow. Oh, excuse me. Uh, even if this fellow tried to kill him, well, he had no choice. But what I don't understand is, why was Moore buried with a dog? Or vice versa? Hmm. Hmm. 
Mass Kendricks. What I don't understand is why we dig this, dig up this wicked fellow and ship him back to England. Well, it's one of those strange things, Pierre. Wicked he may have been, but when the family heard what happened, why, they, they wanted him shipped back so he could be buried where he was born. No good. Very bad. Or good or bad, we gotta be on our way. You get that gear loaded, will you? And I'll tell Kendricks we're ready. Ivor Kendricks himself was an odd sort of man, almost a hermit. There was an old story in the company about an unhappy love affair in his youth. At any rate, he seemed content to live out his life in this spot. Sometimes a year or even two would go by without his seeing another trader. He'd married recently. His wife was a girl of the shoe swap tribes. Like him, she didn't talk much. We're ready to leave, Mr. Kendricks. These are Moore's belongings. The clippings are in there. Newspaper stories he saved about the murders. Now I'm ready to leave, too. Well, I imagine. You see, you're, you're ready to leave, Mr. Kendrick? You uh, don't have any objections to taking me along, Mr. Manor? No, 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 of course. Only I... Well, I... I didn't realize you ever left this place. You have quite a reputation for being a hermit. Yes, I suppose I do. But uh, good reason to take the opportunity to travel in good company. Well, Pierre and I will be glad to have your company, too. I have a little business in Fort Cale, and I'd like to get a little present for my wife for the first time. Pierre. Pierre! Where are you? This is right here the sound came from. Indian? Not likely. Pierre? I swear to you, it spoke to me. Who? That there. What did it say? Good morning? I swear to you. Don't make a fool of yourself, man. I'm not a fool of myself. It spoke to me. It must have been the horse. Can a horse speak? Well, it could have made some... Well, if the coffin spoke to you, what did it say? Words. Well, we're going south with our talking coffin. Ready to leave? No. Want to stay here then? Well, goodbye, girl. I'll be back in about a week. Good time that first day. There were no signs of life. This was a remote, lonely region, belonging to creatures other than men. The wind had begun to rise. I think we better stop here, eh? I think we better stop here and shoulder over there. Right. This wind gets any worse. We may be in for it. Storms get very bad in this country. Over there near the trees, Pierre. Unless you want to stay with our unseen friend here. What? I said, unless you want to stay with the wife. Hello! What are you 
doing? I heard someone coming. Hello! I didn't hear anything. Who else would be around here? No one, I hope. It could only be Indians if it is anyone at all. Hello! Someone coming. Maybe wolves. But I heard someone call. Oh, only the wind. The tree branches are scraping against each other. Banner, I heard. Mr. Kendrick, didn't you hear me? I think you look worried. Worried? <laughs> Not me, my friend. Just hungry. I think we should see to our supper. Yes. Before one of Pierre's unseen friends gets to it first. And why, why the wolves are following us? And why on a nice day do the wind she blow? I tell you, this journey is under a curse. Under a curse. Pity to see what hunger can do to a man. I think we'd better eat right away. This thing may be catching. Someone, something has come here to join us. Something right now is traveling with us. Mr. Falcon, would you be so kind as to stop indulging your ridiculous imagination? I'm not accustomed to spending my days listening to gibberish. I don't want to hear any more on the subject. <laughs> Good supper. Now, why don't you play a little music for us, Pierre? Music? Put us in the mood for sleep. You think I can play the harmonica with him lying out there? It won't disturb him. <laughs> but it disturbed me. I wish it was morning. I wish it was five mornings from tomorrow. And we are back in Fort Cale and goodbye to him. Uh, poor fellow, he's as harmless now as the box he's in. Poor fellow? He murdered how many people? And you say poor fellow? Well, Pierre, it's a wonderful world to be alive in. If you live like a free man, nothing to hide, nothing to run away from. Moore must have had a miserable time of it, take it all in all. I guess I could spare him a little pity. He got what he had coming to him. If you never suspected anything until the time he turned on you, there must have been many times he could have killed you easily. Mr. Kendricks, you're a very fortunate man to have escaped with your life. Well, he seems like a good sort. I had no reason to suspect him at all. Until that day, I turned just in time to see him raise his gun. Luckily, I drew first. Good, good. You've got to learn to think quickly when you live alone out here. Yeah. The dog wasn't as lucky. The dog? The one that was buried with Moore. We found the skeleton and part of the hide. Must have uh, been a powerful animal. <laughs> oh, he was that all right. How is dog come to die? Same time as this fellow Moore. It wasn't Moore's dog. It was my dog. Your dog, Mr. Kendricks? Yes. Moore shot the dog before he tried to kill me. Man tried to kill my dog, he don't have to try to kill me. <laughs> I kill him first. Well, any man who would kill a harmless animal for no reason must be sick in the head, Pierre. Sick? <laughs> this man is more than sick. He is dead. And I'm glad. Excuse me. <coughs> you see? It doesn't pay to be rude. I meant no harm. No, it was just an owl. If it comes any nearer and sits high against the sky, I may be able to bring him down. Why? Why do that? It's perfectly harmless. Who's he going to hurt? <laughs> well, he frightened your friend here. And if we expect to get any sleep tonight, We'll sleep all right. At least nothing alive is going to keep Pierre awake while he's sleeping. Well, I'm a very sound sleeper myself. And at your age, Mr. Banner, you certainly must be a sound sleeper. Well, usually, yes, but uh, tonight, Pierre and I are going to take turns staying awake. Staying awake, Mr. Banner? Well, suppose Pierre is right and something or someone is following us. Mm -hmm. Well, we can't take any chances. You look pretty foolish coming into Fort Kale with an empty coffin. I'll take the first watch. You two gentlemen get some sleep. I'll wait for you. Yeah.
What is it? What happened? I saw the dog. You saw him? He ran right past us and came out here. <laughs> Kendricks, it's us. In the name of all the saints, what happened? What is it? it? Must have frightened them off, whatever it is. You shot low enough to frighten me. Now you are getting nervous, my friend. I shot way over your head, naturally, man. What was it you were out here after? Then I saw him. It was your dog. What kind of nonsense is this? I haven't got a dog. I, I think Pierre means the dog Moore killed, the big dog that you buried with Moore. Now, see here, Ben. Oh, I, I know it sounds foolish, and I, I wouldn't swear to it, of course. I, I may have dozed off and dreamed that I saw this huge dog circling around us till it streaked under the wagon and left no, no tracks. You see? He saw him. It was the dead dog. I wish I'd seen him. I'd have... Well, I, I mean, I would have been able to show you it wasn't. Well, let's not talk any more about it. There's nothing to be frightened of, Pierre. I, I'm sure that if Mr. Kendrick's friend is following us, it's only because he, he wants to keep an eye on the man who killed his master. Well, the sooner we get underway, the better. I'll be glad when this job is over and done with. And he didn't even see him. sunrise, we'd eaten, packed, and moved out of our camping place. I was growing suspicious of Kendrick's, the story of his dog. against us this time. What do you make of this, Mr. Kendricks? I'd say it may be a very bad storm. We'd be better off under shelter. Where we find these? Well, there's an old cabin on the river. Can't be far west. Saw it on the way up. I know the place. On a point of land, wild water on both sides. No, it's a terrible place. It's fairly close. Half a day's travel. With any luck. What's it, Pierre? It is no matter where we go. Bad luck travels with us. I agree that this package doesn't help us very much. Starting to believe in ghosts, Mr. Kendricks? I believe in a swift journey and a warm fire and less paddle from strangers. This is my errand, you know. We'll head up river. People, people tell me stories and they just drift right out of my... Mr. Kendricks, there must be a story connected with that ring you're wearing around your throat. What? Oh, oh, you mean this ring? Oh, yes, of course. Isn't there a story about every ring? There's not a particularly interesting story about this one, no. Did, did, did you 
hear that? Hear what? Sounded like the dog. You know, when I saw your dog last, Mr. Kelly. Look, I have no objection to stories, but if you think... scratching at the door. Oh, it was just a branch. For a moment, though, I... It's it just that... It's so vivid to me. I saw that dog so plainly. It was a beautiful animal. He walked around the campsite, and he looked at me, and he looked at Pierre, and then he walked very slowly toward you, Mr. Kendricks. And then a most peculiar thing happened. He stood still, and I heard him growl, and his hackles rose, and I could see the hair rise on his back, sharp like a saw. He bared his fangs, and I thought he was going to go right at your throat. He has come. He is here. Shut up, man. Don't be an idiot. Shut the door. Never mind, Pierre. I'll close the door. Yeah. Come here. What? What do you want me for? I want you to listen. See if you hear it, too. I, I, I don't hear. Uh, but what, what, what do you hear listen. now? The dog over there by the coffin. Yeah. No, I don't hear. Yes, you do. You hear it. Oh, yes, I do. I yes. hear it. Yeah. You didn't miss that. No, no, I didn't miss that. Look. Look. You can see the dog there now lying by the coffin. Yes, I, I, I see him, I see him. Let's close the door, Pierre, and leave him in peace. Unless Mr. Kendricks wants to come and see his dog. Yes, I'll take a look at that blasted dog, and I'll show you your dog was nothing but a wolf, at the most. Just a moment, Mr. Kendricks. I think you'd better be warned. This is no ordinary dog you're going to see. Of course it isn't. It's probably a coyote, not even a wolf. It's Trader Kendrick's dog. Bullet wound shows as clear as day. Doesn't it, Pierre? Yeah, clear as day. It, it, the bullet hole. Right between the eyes. Right between the eyes. Where you shot him when he tried to defend his master. Yes, I shot him. At last I shot him. The sneaking beast, watching me, watching me day and night. Never letting me out of his sight. It's enough to drive any man crazy. But I've got my gun. And nobody can best me now. Where is he? Where's that devil beast? Where's that dog that hounded the devil? Throw your dog back! Throw your dog back, Henry! Watch you look at the heart this time! the dog? Yes or no? I see the dog. No. I take off my hat. You are a clever man. Oh, I don't know. Uh, you gave me the idea with your superstitious imagination. No superstitious, no imagination. You yourself saw the dog. You know, in time, I, I probably would have come to believe it myself.